your Bibles this morning, Matthew chapter number 1. Matthew chapter number 1, today's message is titled, The Wise Men and the Fool. The Wise Men and the Fool. And uh, we get an opportunity to choose today if we want to identify with the wise men or the fool. And uh, I can just tell you right out of the gate uh, the choice we ought to make. But I'll just tell you in addition, there's a battle that's always going on between our flesh and our spirit, the old man and the new man. And we want so desperately at times to choose the flesh, but it's never wise. It's always right to worship and serve and put Jesus first in your life. And I pray this Christmas season, if Jesus has moved somewhere down in the ranks of your heart, that on this Sunday morning before Christmas. Now you'll put him right back in his proper place as King of Kings and Lord of Lords in your life. Let's read this together. Matthew chapter number 2, beginning in verse number 1. What'd I say? I still don't know what I've done, but y'all enjoy it. <laughs> I can laugh too. In case there's any confusion, I'm getting ready to read it. Matthew chapter 2. <laughs> 2. All right. Matthew chapter number 2. Y'all can tell me later what I did. Did I say Matthew 1? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I blew it, didn't I? <laughs> Matthew chapter number 2. Beginning in verse number 1. For real. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king was, had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently, what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise. And take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod... When he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. We come to this passage of scripture and this is the story of the wise men and their encounter with the Christ. I don't know about you, but I like nativity scenes. How many of you like to see nativity scenes? I, I enjoy that. I'm thankful. I think they should be out everywhere, and we should be reminded this Christmas season that, uh, that we are celebrating the birth of the Savior. I will tell you something interesting, though. 
uh, there's a biblical inaccuracy when you see wise men standing at a manger with a group of shepherds and the sheep and the animals because it didn't happen just like this. I didn't realize until I've been studying the Bible that they actually had Photoshop back in Jesus' time <laughs> because they were Photoshopping. We've been Photoshopping wise men into the picture of Jesus in Bethlehem in the manger for all these years. Uh, the truth is the, the wise men uh, weren't at the manger at the time that Christ and the, met up with the shepherds. I'll show you something interesting, verse number 11. So the Bible says, when they were come, the wise men, into the, what's the next word there? The house. So now, Joseph has moved his family like a responsible man out of the barn into a house. And they come to the house where Jesus is. As a matter of fact, it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 60 days or so since Christ was born that the wise men show up and meet Jesus in Bethlehem. Here's another thing. Who said there was three wise men? Now, the Bible doesn't say that. There were three gifts and types of gifts. And we didn't mess up by putting three wise men at a manger. I see the whole story. And it's like if you see a nativity scene, don't get angry because there's wise men standing there. Just imagine it like this. It's like the cast coming out on the stage at the end of the story of Christmas. And they're all getting ready to take a bow. And they're all there present in front of that manger. Don't get angry about it. But the Bible does give us this story of the wise men at a little different time than we meet up with the shepherds. And God is doing something very wonderful here. He's showing us some beautiful things. And these men, these wise men from the east, uh, these wise men, these magi. Have you ever wondered why uh, they're often referred to as magi? I'll tell you why. The word translated out of the Greek in the original New Testament to wise men is literally magi. And so we have magi, we have wise men, all are okay to say. And we have the story of a group of wise men. They hear about a savior, a king. And they devote their lives and a portion of their lives and their wealth and themselves to finding out the truth of Jesus. Folks, I want you to know something that's very wise. In stark contrast, we have this man Herod. Herod. He is at that time, by appointment, the so-called king of the Jews. By appointment of men only and not by appointment of God. And Herod makes a real fool of himself in an effort to destroy the influence of Christ in his life. It's a sad story for Herod the fool. It's a joyful story. For the Magi from the East. What's the difference? I'll tell you. Wise men come to worship him. Fools seek to destroy him. And you know what? This conundrum has been going on for more than 2,000 years. And the outcome has always been the same. If you will choose to worship and serve Jesus Christ in your life. And you allow God to be your king. You are both wise and your future is very bright. Both for life and eternity. And if you choose to rule and reign as the king in your own world. On your own throne. Doing your own thing your own way. And rejecting the love of our God who wants to lead you guide you and bless you if you choose to reject him you choose the path of a fool the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God do you know what Jesus wants to be he wants to be the king and God of your life why so he can put his thumb on you and make you a peon in his army no so he can set you free so he can give you peace. So he can give you joy. So he can make you the man that you ought to be and the woman you ought to be and the son or daughter that God saves you to be. God wants to set you free. 
and the story, we meet those two things. The wise men and the fool. Number one, wise men come to worship him. Here's what the Bible says in verse number one. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Do you know what happened to these guys? The Bible gives us some insight into them. They are uh, they're magi, they're uh, wise men, they're uh, prominent, educated men. They're from the east, they're Gentiles. They didn't look like the Jewish people. They didn't smell like the Jewish people. They didn't talk like the Jewish people. They were from another part of the world altogether. This is interesting for you Bible scholars. Some people believe that from the wise men came one wise man, one wise man from the sons of Noah. One wise man represented Sham. One right wise man represented Ham. And one wise man represented Japheth. There's no Bible evidence of that, but I'll tell you this. When we look at these wise men, we're reminded that Jesus came to save the whole world, all people, any race, any type. Jesus came for everybody. Now, these wise men, they come from the east. They're intelligent. They have wealth. They come bearing very important, pricey gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These aren't your typical, everyday boneheads that would fall for some religious trick. Matter of fact, what God had shown them and what God had done with this star, they said there is such significance to the Lord Jesus Christ and this coming king that we see, that we've heard of coming in Jerusalem, that we're going to go see him ourselves. You know what a wise man does? A wise man is willing to put his own plans on hold in order to follow and find the will of a righteous, holy God. They said, now look, the things we're doing are according to the world center, pretty important. But there's nothing more important than finding Jesus. There's nothing more important than humbling ourselves and seeking this king, the king of kings, the king of the Jews. Wise men come and worship him. The Bible says in verse number 2, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. You know what they acknowledged? They acknowledge that this king, Jesus, is so important that he has his star. <laughs> his star. Who's in control of the stars? God is. Who are they coming to worship? God. God sent his king, King Jesus. We've come, we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Wise men come to worship him. Uh, they are persistent. They end up in Jerusalem. They imagine that Jerusalem is surely the place where the Jewish king will be born. I mean, that's where Herod's throne is, and that's where uh, the center of commerce is for that part of the world. And so they come to Jerusalem. When they get to Jerusalem, they've lost sight of the star for a time. And when they get there, they come asking of Herod, where is he, this king of the Jews? Well, everybody in town, especially Herod, is really upset about this. Do what? So Herod summons the prophets of the day. There were people there that were studious and understood the Bible, but they didn't believe it. They said, where is it? Herod calls the chief priests and scribes. Come here, guys. You tell me, where does the Bible say that the Messiah is going to come from? Where is he going to be born? They said, well, that's simple. Bethlehem. Do what? Yeah, Bethlehem. Bethlehem, really? As far as I'm concerned, the county seat of Smith County has got to be Chilhowee, right? I'm just messing. It'd be like, you love Chilhowee, you know, and you think, surely the king of Smith County is going to come out of Chilhowee. And you read in the paper, the king is going to be born in Saltville. That's what it sounded like to them. <laughs> the king's going to be born in 
Sawable? <laughs> the king's going to be born in Bethlehem? Really? That's what God said. So they made the five-mile trip from Jerusalem, and they sought diligently and found in Bethlehem at the house the Christ child. But look what the Bible says. I love this because it's so true. The Bible says in verse number 9, When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. I just want you to know something. When you begin sincerely seeking the will of God and the person of Jesus Christ, his guidance will be present for you, okay? You're sitting here thinking, I don't know how I've gone so far away from God and I don't want to be a fool. I want to be wise. I want to please God with my life. I want what God can give me. I just want to encourage you in this way. If you'll just simply begin to follow God wherever you are, you're going to find out that he will send his guidance and he will send his love and he will send his direction. And you'll know and you'll find the will of God. No man has ever struck out to find Jesus and not been able to find him. If you strike out to find Christ and develop a relationship with the Lord and you will put your flesh and your sin on the sideline and you will search with your heart for Christ, guess what? The star will show up. It may be a person. It may be a sign. It could be just about anything. But God will guide you to his son. So these wise men, they follow the Lord. The Bible says the star which they saw in the east went before them. Verse number 9, till it came and stood over where the young child was. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. What happened? Those wise men sought the Lord, found the Lord. What did it produce? Not just joy, exceeding great joy. That's what Jesus does for wise people who will humble themselves and seek him out to be their king. Folks, I want you to know something. Number one, wise men come to worship him. Number two, fools seek to destroy him. Fools seek to destroy him. I'm, I'm alarmed and disturbed by Mr. Herod. Herod is bad news. They call him Herod the Great. But I'll have you know something. That Herod the Great is not an accurate title for Herod the Great. Herod was a tyrant. He was evil. Herod was notorious for his evil acts and deeds. He murdered his favorite wife. The week before he died, he murdered his own, he had his own son murdered so that he wouldn't rise to power on the throne. He had it designed into his plan that certain prominent, faithful Jewish people, leaders, would be put to death on the day of his death so that there would not be celebration among the faithful Jewish people of the day. Herod was bad. Herod was bad. I want you to know something about Herod. Herod was also scared to death that he would lose what he had provided for himself and what he had. Folks, here's the deal. The things of this world, the power of this world... The things that fulfill the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride. Look, they do not lead to satisfaction. They lead to insecurity and emptiness. And Herod is such a picture of this. And it's so foolish to think that somehow if I can get things or I can get power or I can get to a certain position that surely I can have joy and peace. No, 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 no. See, the wise men, they gave up their earthly ambitions to seek after Jesus, and in return, they got exceeding great joy. Herod refused to bow to the creator God of the universe. And you know what he got? Misery. 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 Emptiness. He was paranoid. He would not bow to God. He was a fool. The Bible says in verse number 3, When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Guess who else was troubled this time? Maybe I should title the message, The Wise Men and the Fools. 
Because not only was Herod troubled, the Bible says that all Jerusalem was troubled with him. Jerusalem, the people in Jerusalem, the leadership in Jerusalem, they said, we've got life, we've, we've got into the routine of life, we do things our way. And if there's a new king coming, that's going to change everything. They were f- so foolish to think that if Jesus came into their lives, that it would change everything to the bad. That it would upset the things they've done so much that they couldn't have what they'd had in the past. Or they couldn't have joy. They couldn't have happiness. But it's so silly. The devil sells us a bill of goods. The devil says, if you get saved, you'll, never, you'll be a Bible thumb for the rest of your life. You'll never have fun ever again. That is so wrong. If you get saved, you'll have more fun than you ever had. And you won't have any regrets the next day. Hey, it's awesome being a Christian. But the devil had sold a bill of goods to Herod that if you bow to King Jesus, you're going to be miserable, folks. That's foolish. The devil had sold a bill of goods to the city of the the town of Jerusalem that if you bow to King Jesus, you're not going to make any money. You're not going to have anything. You're not going to have joy. It's going to be miserable. It was a lie. It's foolish to think that if I surrender my life to God, I'm going to lose. That's foolish. Why did Herod so vehemently hate Jesus? Because he thought, man, it's going to mess up my life. Folks, I want you to know, as horrid as Herod was, had he submitted himself to the Lord Jesus Christ, he could have been forgiven of his sins. And had a hope and a bright future. Had he only humbled himself. The Bible says in verse number 4. Herod gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together. He demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor... That shall rule my people. Then Herod, when he had privily, privately, privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. So here's Herod. You know what you have to do if you're living for the flesh? You always have to plot and scheme and work your angle and trick and deceive. So here's what Herod does. He says, tell me, wise men. What time did the star show up? And then he says in verse 8, He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Speaking of the wise men, Herod says, He sends the wise men to Bethlehem. He says, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When I read this, I see some evil villain from a cartoon. (laughs) He says to the wise men, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. He didn't want to worship him. He wanted to murder him. But it's just a picture. If you pursue the wickedness of the world and the lust of flesh, guess what you have to do? You have to lie and scheme and trick and pretend We don't have to do that when we live for Christ. We can live honest, upright, forthright lives that please God, that bring peace. Hallelujah. Fools seek to destroy him. The Bible says in verse number 9, When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. Fools seek to destroy them. Number one, wise men come to worship him. Two, fools seek to destroy him. Number three, the gifts they brought. Look at the Bible says in verse number 11. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. What did they do? I want you to see the order. Here's the order that God desires. The gifts they brought. The Bible says that when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. What's the first thing they offered to Jesus? Themselves. 
Not go. Not go. Some people got the idea that all God wants is my money. Baloney. He's got more than you do. Amen. You start worshiping God, though, and you understand what a joy it is to serve God. And the next thing you know, you want to be generous with God, too. Because he has been generous with you. What did they give him first? They gave him what God wanted. God didn't want their gold. They were welcome to give it, and God used it. God didn't want their gold, their frankincense, and myrrh. The most important thing to God was that God got them. Why? So he could use them and abuse them. No. So he could love them and bless them. So he could love them and bless them. And I can guarantee you this, we don't have the end of the story. But I can guarantee you this, that those wise men, when they gave themselves to Jesus and presented their gifts and went on their way with joy, I know this for a fact, as long as Jesus was king of their lives, their lives were full of joy and peace that only God could give. What did they give? They fell down and worshipped him. Then what did they give? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They're important, but they're secondary. Gold, it's a beautiful picture. The first wise men came and bowed to, to Jesus and handed him gold. Gold is the symbol of royalty, and surely he was king. Frankincense came next. Frankincense was used in the Old Testament law as a sin offering. If you burn a sweet-smelling savor to the Lord, a burnt offering, they often use frankincense. And do you know what frankincense was for? A sin offering. And that second king, in obedience to the Lord, gave frankincense and pointed to the fact that Jesus would pay the price for all of our sins. The third king bowed and said, hey, I bring to you myrrh. Myrrh, it was the spice that was used primarily to anoint the bodies of the dead. And it points to the fact that Jesus would die on the cross for our sins. God did a great work when he brought Jesus. Now, here's the point. I'd like to make wise men worship Jesus. Fools seek to destroy him. You know, we're all tempted to live our own lives and do our own thing. But I want you to know something. The product, it hurts. It hurts. How many of you... I won't ask any details, but I want folks in this auditorium this Christmas Sunday. How many of you folks would say, Pastor, I know for a fact from experience that choosing your own way, it hurts. That's you. Would you raise your hand and raise it high? I want you to look around. Now, I'd like to put your hands down. Christians all over the building. How many of you would say, thanks be to God, I know for a fact That choosing Jesus brings great joy. I've seen it happen. Would you raise your hand and raise it out? Look around. It's a fact. It's proven over and over and over. Ask Herod. You could ask him. He's an eternal soul created in the image of God. And most likely he's paid the penalty of his sin even to this moment, a place called hell. If you could ask the wise men who chose Christ, they'd testify. Herod would say, hey, it hurts to choose your own way. The wise men would say, it's a joy to choose Christ. Folks, we have an opportunity to choose today. This Christmas, accept the gift of Christ at Christmas and be made whole live for Jesus preach you don't know how far away I've gone it don't matter how far away you've gone you know what you're going to find out 
If you turn around, say, Lord, forgive me. He's going to be right there. Amen. Loving you, forgiving you. I've never been saved, preacher. Well, let today be the day of salvation. Confess your sin, your need of Jesus. Ask him to forgive your sin and be your savior. He'll honor his word. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Isn't that wonderful? The story of the wise men and the fool. With God's help, I want to be a wise man. And put Jesus first in my life. Let's pray.